What is up guys it's the real deal welcome to the channel guys today we are going to be doing a honest review on eternal evolution eternal evolution is an idle rpg rpg sound for role-playing game idle well in the real world idle means lazy not working in the gaming world idle rpg means it's a game where you can still get the same sort of satisfaction and rewards without having to put in those hefty hours this is a great game for anyone that wants something to play on the side or casually or if you're like me i'm a very very busy person i have a very hectic lifestyle i've got a full-time job i've got a wife i've got a baby and i make youtube videos that is my life in a nutshell i'm a very very busy person and eternal evolution fits in perfectly with that so what we'll do is we'll look at gameplay graphics and longevity so for me, longevity is a big one. You know, if I'm going to be playing a game, I want to be enjoying it. And I want to make sure that those hours that I'm putting into it aren't to waste. And that I'm going to be playing the game for a long time, at least at least a year. Um, and so far, Eternal Evolution is ticking all the boxes. So if we come into the borders, this is where sort of the main things are. And there's so much to do here. So first of all, top left, we've got the Lost Valley. And this is where our three main dungeons are. We have Sincero Marsh, where we take on this spider woman and we unlock our commanders here. So commanders are used to give certain classes special abilities um, and stat bonuses. Then we've got the Disa Caves. Disa Caves, we can farm gear here. And like any RPG, gear is probably the most important thing in this game. And how you build your heroes is a big part of the strategy that you use in this game then we've got the terror dome so terror dome we can get prototypes here and in the prototypes there's only three that you can use per battle and in general you get one for your support one for your tank and then you get one for your dps then we've then later on you unlock the triangle and in the triangle there's loads of bosses here and we can get way way better gear for here as well so if we go to the roulette of truth, so I've been playing for two and a half months now. We've just cleared normal. Then we're going to be working on to hard and then we'll be in hell. So I'm in the mid game right now, working on progressing into end and late game. And it's going to take me a long time to get to that level 25 of hell. So as you can see, this game is going to last us for a very, very long time. Uh, then we've got the Crimson Abyss. So here we take on Eurolepi, who is a giant ruby rhino. We get EXP potions and rubies, and these are used to level up our heroes and also help us later on with hyper evolution. Then we've got the soul mines. Um, the soul mine itself is like a doom tower. So if you ever played any other RPGs, it's just like you go down. Well, in other games, you go up. In uh, Eternal Evolution, you come down. So you sort of just go down taking on these waves. And there's also a faction version as well. So on the right hand side, we've got all these factions and you can obviously only use uh, Terrians for that one, Atlantis for that one, and then uh, Wenfrey for this one. And then we've got the Ancient Altar. So Ancient Altar, it's one of my favorite places. We can only do it once a week, but this is where we have to take on these three bosses one by one and we get some crazy good gear here. So if I click on Milestones, come down to Hell, we get recruitment cards. So this is where we can um, recruit heroes for our team, uh, for the roster. And recruiting heroes is a big part of this game. It's all about collecting heroes. And you need different heroes and different classes to take on different content. We also pick up gene hybrids as well, which are used to level up triple S heroes. And yeah, that's a big part of the game. This is huge. This is one of my favorite things in the game. And then we can also do Hell, Hard, Normal, Easy and Novice and get all of those rewards as well on a weekly basis when you sort of get further on through the game. Then we've got the Exotic Expedition. So Exotic Expedition, you can only choose 20 heroes and once they're dead, they're gone. They're gone, they're dead. Um, yeah, so how this works is we do Wave, Boss, Wave, Boss and it just gradually gets harder and harder and harder and you just cycle through until your whole team is dead and that's it you can't you can't get any further uh, it's also ranked as well uh, i've not started to do it this week but you can see like these are all the people that 
have done it so far and they're all on to sort of cycle three f cycle eight what a beast um but yeah and that's how that works then we've got the arena and one thing that's really really missing is live arena i wish they had that um live arena would be great so with live arena that you know because we can pick five heroes i think they should do you know three bands each and then they pick you pick and you just pick one by one that would be great i really feel like they should introduce that into the game uh, at the moment we've got a regular arena so regular arena is basically classic arena 1v1 uh, then we've got galactic arena which is 3v3 hell arena starts as one then to three then to four it might even go up to five i'm not sure just yet because i've not progressed that far in the game you can see though the real deal is sitting at number one though and uh, hell arena is one of the places where you get the best rewards and then we've got summit arena which i feel like is the pinnacle of arena and this works as you have like your qualifiers then you work into like the top 16 and you can see that we made it there we did get absolutely wrecked the disrespect was unreal and hex took us out very very early on again he's a monster so i'm not surprised that we lost there he actually did win it last season so a little disappointed that i did come up against him but it is what it is and then you work your way through and you fight for that number one spot again this is 3v3 the only difference is it's done blind so you don't know what you're going to come up against but yeah keeps things things it keeps things interesting and fresh and then we've got the wastelands i hate the wastelands i find it really boring but with the wastelands you have that magic sweep button uh, sweep button sweep button and you can just literally just blitz for it don't have to do it and you can just pick up the rewards then we've got the rift it reminds me of like Zelda and Final Fantasy VII. So you just walk around with your hero and you just basically have to solve puzzles. Really, really fun game mode. And then we've got the Time Vortex. So we've got the Twilight Lands, Holy Land Contract and Endless Battles. Endless and Holy Land are basically the same. You just have to fight these bosses over and over again, do different missions and try and get the best score that you can. And you can just do it as many times as you want. Then we've got the Twilight Lands, which is very similar to the Exotic Expedition. Um, this time, though, you can pick up a team of 30, but when they're dead, they're dead. And you just have to sort of go through all these different bosses. And there's just, um, again, it's like five, well, four waves, one boss, four waves, one boss. And again, really, really good rewards here. And this is sort of, I think at the moment, this is like the end end game right now so let's come out and have a look at our heroes so heroes um we'll start with anpu every single hero has their own cutscene. i love anpu's cutscene. the level of detail and animation in this is crazy amazing just love it so anpu he's like an egyptian god of death um you can see he's a jackal i love his character design um you know he's got this staff we've got this cape even though he looks quite simple, uh, there's a lot of detail on him as well. And I love the stance, like one hand behind the back. How cocky can you be? Then we've got Dominic, who's like a cyber assassin um, or cyber ninja even. Uh, is anyone else getting Deadpool vibes? I'm sure this is a direct ripoff of Deadpool 1. Uh, but yeah, again, a great cutscene and every single hero has their own cutscene um yeah so he's an assassin so he teleports behind people's um he like just pops off doing that burst damage and just you know assassinates people um but yeah he's a cyber ninja very similar to like metal gear solid if you've ever played that the first one reminds me of the ninja from that but yeah great character design just look at that beautiful and then if we come to another one of my faves randall i just again cr great animation great cutscene. um yeah just looks so cool he looks like a badass actually in my opinion he's trash um he's really dropped off sort of as our i can't use him anymore for progression um but yeah if we look at his gear as well this is one thing i love about this game is flexibility and freedom so i stripped him of his gear and threw that on someone else so he's in pretty rubbish gear right now and also the talent so i robbed him of his talents 
stuck them on someone else, and you can really just transfer things around without being taxed and punished. So another thing that I really like about this game. However, there are some terrible character design in here, and Boar being a big one, he reminds me of Man Bear Pig from South Park. So if you've ever watched South Park, he, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking at. Um, just, I don't know, just very, very basic. Um, I just feel like he could look so much better. Yeah, and that face as well. Oh, <laughs> only his mother could love him. Then we've got Rakana, who is a really, really strong assassin. Way, way better than Randall, but looks awful. Um, just looks like, you know, a generic, basic wave minion from World of Warcraft. Definitely needs some TLC. Just terrible character design. So if we come to Anpu and we'll look at the gear. So gear obviously being a big part of this. You have all these different sets and it's really, really important how you build your heroes out. One thing I will say is I feel like it's very, very basic. Um, I feel like in other games you can have like one to five different builds per like character. And in this game, there's only sort of like two different builds that you can go. And I feel like they should really introduce like more gear and just mix things up a little bit. I just feel like it's very, very basic. Talents. Now I have a big issue with talent. This is, you can see it's just so linear. You can, it's literally just put in the points and that's it. There's no thought behind it. You literally just level them out. Um, I wish it was more like World of Warcraft, where, like, for example, like a mage, you could go fire, you could go ice or arcane. Um, you know, you can really mix things up and make your heroes just work in different ways. And that's what I feel like is really missing. I feel, you know, I, I wish that, you know, you'd have three different talent paths and you can, you know, the, you know, the generic one is like you put in full talent points in one talent tree and then you can put a few here and there. I feel like that's really missing from this game and that would be a huge game changer. I really wish they'd put that in. Um, also, because it's so hard to get heroes, I feel that, you know, they should allow you like two different um, talent part like builds as well, just like they have with equipment. So with equipment, there's three different options and I feel like they should do that with the talents. That would be a real game changer. So then the other thing of this game is collecting heroes. So we go to recruit and you can recruit heroes from here. And as you can see, I've been sitting on my on my shards. It's, it's just how I've always been. Like you want to save up and pull at the right time. But yeah, so that's what you do is you save up um, cards, pull your heroes, collect them and build up your roster. And this is something a lot of people complain about is where you evolve your heroes. So we can evolve, let's uh, evolve laser I've never used him to be honest he, I think he's actually a pretty decent summoner but you evolve your heroes and this is like a big part of progression in the game and then you have to get copies of your heroes to evolve them but what people complain about is that you start to need to get loads of copies of the same hero and I disagree with that I think that's actually a good thing for the game so I'm just going to come out and see if I scroll down and get like one of my elite uh yeah one of the more advanced heroes so um like anpu i need two copies of anpu to evolve him and this is what people complain about because they say it's so hard to evolve but i disagree and the reason for that is is that if i could just straight up evolve my hero to max level i could just blitz through the content and we'd be done in a week. So I actually like that it slows things down and puts the game at a nice pace. I think that's how it should be. So I have no issue with that. But that's what people complain about. Um, but yes, yeah, so to sort of evolve further, you do need to get lots and lots of copies of your heroes. Again, I think it's a good thing. So let's have a look at some gameplay and graphics. So we're going to do campaign. Um, so you can see this wave. 24 mil, we're 3.5 mil. We are going to get absolutely decimated in this fight. And if we click down here, we've got our commander. So we've got um, Orbeck. So he um, says here tank. So he's going to help our tanks. And if you click on here, it will tell you what it does. And then if we went to Gable, this is one for assassins. Uh, Discar is great for our summoners. Let's try it. 
I mean, we're not going to beat this wave anyway, so why not? Then we've got um, our three prototypes. So this one's the Nucleus, which is great for summoners. Then we've got um, Company of Heroes, which is great for our tanks. And then we've got Scholar Monument for supports, which is going to help with healing. And then the next thing you can do is your formation. So in general, it makes sense to have a tank up front. So we've got two tanks in front. We've got two summoners in the middle, and then we've got our um, support in the back. And you can literally just move these around to however you want to be. I think we'll put it back to how it was. Um, and then, yeah, we're just going to go for it. So being an idle RPG, you literally just let it run. And it's all about how you've built your team comp, and you just let it do the work for you. You can manual fight. So if we click on auto, I've turned off Anpu. So we could turn off Anpu. Turn off jacks as well. And when they're glowing, you just click the button and you can see their Ampu. He does this like big golden wave um, doing all this damage. And then he also stuns people as well. And he summons these zombies to take people out. Uh, but really, really cool. I love the graphics in this game. Really nice, interesting sort of environments. And then uh, the, you know, the animations, the special effects absolutely love it just crazy 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 and i guess the most important thing about this game is the gameplay and for me the gameplay it's all about strategy i really enjoy building out the heroes i love trying to think of different team comps uh, let's actually do the pterodome we'll take on argo yeah let's do ex to e2 um again this is a great thing about the game is that we've run out of stamina we can still take on content that we've not completed before and you don't get punished for it. There's no loss of stamina and you're not going to lose out and you can just try loads of different things. So um, this is again going to be a wipe. I know I can't beat this boss, but we can try. We can at least try, try out different things, try out different commanders, different prototypes, and you just string it all together. Um, and then also just try out different heroes, different builds on your heroes. And Samuel's already dead. Thank God he got the revive. Uh, but yeah, but again, I love the animations um, and just the style of the game. Just beautiful. Just beautiful. So I think that's pretty much everything in a nutshell. Um, I think it's an amazing game. Um, I think it's a solid 4.5 out of 5. Um, there's still definitely some things I wish they would do, like the talents, the gear. Um, but overall, I love the gameplay. I love the graphics. Um, actually, just something very, very quickly touch on as well. In the guild as well, there's so much to do here. There is a very, very good guild versus guild system. Um, there's a few different things that you do as a guild. So we have the guild hunt. So as a, a team, as a guild, we are taking on all of these bosses. Um, there's also the guild exhibition, which is like the exotic exposition, but we do that as a guild. Um, and then I guess one of the other things that I'm not a fan of is that there's there's it can be a little bit overcomplicated. There's so much going on. We have collections. We have to collect all these trophies. Um, we've got the command posts for our commanders. And then we've also got the divine prototypes as well. So many things going on. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to understand how everything works. So sometimes I think things are a little bit overcomplicated. I always think for a great game for me, simplicity is key um so that's where there's sort of room for improvement talents gear and how complex the game is but it definitely makes up for how many things there are to do that it doesn't take up all your you know you can probably clear everything within an hour on a daily basis it's great fun really really enjoyable so yeah for me it's a solid 4.5 hope you guys enjoyed this video please leave me a cheeky thumbs up make sure you smash or smash that subscribe and I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.